liking and subscribing to our 5 a.m. Master Scrum and telling your friends about it. Hope everybody's doing well. It's about 5.29, and we're having a ball. Can you talk about pre-sizing for sprint planning? And we talked the other day about uh, capacity and overcommitting and what the impact of that is. And, you know, preparation is the part that will set you up for failure or success too. I have a lot of teams that would go in with giant backlogs into their sprint planning sessions. Um, uh, that you shouldn't do. And what you should be doing, you should be looking at your team's velocities. And the product owner should be working, you know, the scrum master should be helping them out. Should be making sure that no more than your, your points were from the previous sprints come into the sprint planning session. So what I see a problem with a lot of organizations, and I always had this battle as a scrum master, get rid of some stories. No, we can do it. Get rid of some stories. And I'm like, you're not going to think who's going to admit it. You haven't done it. Just do it. And you're like, oh, man. Um, so uh, there, sprint velocity is this, right? So this is what their average sprint Shh been like this for a couple sprints right but when they come into sprint planning they bring this many stories into the sprint planning right I'm like why are you wasting your time you know you're going to be around here so why are you bringing this many stories right it doesn't make any sense but they do it anyway so what i usually teach my um product owners to do is to use the velocity, history, velocity, maybe last sprint, maybe last couple sprints, whatever they like to do as a team. And they say, hey, yeah, we've been doing an average of 40 points or something like that over the past couple sprints. I said, okay, then they only bring in 40 points worth of work to sprint planning. And once they get the hang of it, it goes so much easier because it feels less frustrating to the team because they can't do all that work. And it's just, it just, once it clicks in the product owner's brain to say, okay, I'm just going to bring in as many stories as that we typically get. I'm not going to bring any more. And in fact, if I can, I encourage them to bring less because no matter how good a team is, there's always some rollover. Hopefully it's not very much. It really should have been only be maybe a couple stories if that. And um, if it's a lot of stories and you got bigger problems, which we can always talk about that. But, um, you know, if your velocity is 40, bring in 35, right, into the sprint. Um, if you're that good of a product owner, you should have a whole backlog of stories, all pre-refined and everything for the next sprint. So if you decide that, you know, you have 35 and maybe they got all the stories done, you bring in couple more stories into the sprint from the, the sprint ahead. So I we'll always laugh at like that. So well if you're that good and you're that prepared, it's not an easy it's 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 easy peasy. All you gotta do is bring a couple stories forward from uh, the backlog or another sprint's future sprint backlog. So again, so to make it easier for success, don't come in, you know, if your velocity is this, right? Don't come up with this many stories in the sprint planning because you're destined for failure. So why set yourself up for failure, right? That's that doesn't make any sense. Come in with this many, maybe even a little bit less in case there's rollover. It gives you pivot room, right? It gives you as a product owner pivot room to change your mind on what you want to do in the last minute, which is okay because you already planned out and you find a bunch of other stories. So if you do that, you're more likely to be successful throughout the sprint. It's just food for thought. Anyway, again, so you're not overcommitting. You don't get the team to commit, overcommit. Come in with a realistic esp um, expectation on what your backlog should be. And it also, also, also helps you be lean because you're not going to talk about stuff that you're not going to do. So if you come in here and you bring in 50% more stories, that's 50% more conversation during sprint planning that you never really should have done in the first place, right? 
So that's why people sprint planning meetings take hours and, and so much time and it feels frustrating because they bring in 50% more stories than they actually can do. So, you know, let's say your sprint planning normally takes two hours and that doesn't include tasking, right? Um, say it takes two hours to go over your list. Well, if you are looking at 50% more or 50% above your average, let's say you got rid of 50% of those stories you don't have to talk about, well, your sprint planning is now an hour, right? Or if you're doing hour sprint planning, but you're typically bringing in, you know, 50% more stories, which they do, um, you can get your sprint planning done like in a half hour, what you decide what you want to do. So your choice, overcommit, get more time back. Which one do you want? Overcommit? More time. I think most people want time. I don't know why they do this, but get them more time, right? So anyway, so that's how you pre prepare for success for your sprint planning sessions. And uh, please like and subscribe to our 5 a.m. Master Scrum. Tell your friends. We are slowly but surely getting there. I'm working on a new logo, so that'll come out soon. And uh, take care. Have a great day.